Good morning, everyone. Um, I just want to acknowledge um, Her Excellency uh, Ambassador Sandra Kramer, European Ambassador to South Africa, uh, Ms. Maria Christina Russo, uh, Director for International Global Approach and International from DG Research and Innovation, European Commission, and Mr. Dan de Toy. Um, and of course, members of the research community and distinguished guests. I'm Vinnie Pillay. I'm the Chief Director for International Resources at the Department of Science and Innovation. Again, welcome. We see a very nice number of participants um, joining us this morning. So that's obviously a good, a good indication of, a, of an information session. Um, so this morning, we are having an information session, you've all known. Uh, around the announcement of South Africa's Horizon um, Europe um, national contact points, but also sharing information around um, uh, Horizon Europe, the Africa Initiative. And these are very important elements for the South African national system of innovation. And of course, for the cooperation um, between South Africa, the Department of Science and Innovation um, and the European Commission. Um, for, for, for those of you who have been involved in this cooperation, you will know that we um, share a very long history of cooperation on uh, science, technology, and innovation with um, between uh, the DSI and the European Commission. And of course, the timing for such an event is, is key and it's very opportune um, given the, the, the international challenges that we all grapple with. These are the multitude of challenges which are common to all of us, whether it's around climate change, food security, energy, and in the role that international cooperation plays in addressing this, I think is quite important. We have from a government level, but we also have from the research community level. And I think this, this opportunity for us to share information and of course, take the cooperation forward is important. But just two sentences very quickly on what the, the program is for the, for the, for the morning. Um, the, of course, this event is co-organized by um, the European Commission. DG Research and Innovation in support uh, from Eurexus Africa, working with the Department of Science and Innovation in South Africa and the ESA STEP platform, and of course the EU delegation um, in South Africa. And like I said before, it's sharing information, launching the national contact point, but also sharing information around uh, Horizon Europe work program and specifically the Africa initiative um, number two, but you will also see on the program there's issues around mobility, et cetera. But I'm I'm not here to do all the speaking. I'm going to, with that, um, go straight into the whole opening of this, formal opening of the session. And again, welcome our very esteemed um, speakers in the segment. And I'd like to introduce um, Ambassador Sandra Kramer uh, to start with the opening segment. Ambassador, over to you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vinny. Good to see you. Uh, thank you very much for organizing all this. Uh, I uh, have learned one thing in South Africa, and that is to say all protocol observed. And that's that's what I'm going to do. Uh, but I want to just acknowledge uh, Christina Russo, my good friend, who is really dynamic, together with her team, Lorenzo, Nienke, and everybody, but also Dan Dutoit and Vinny yourself and the Department of Science and Innovation. So all of you, thanks very much for the privilege to be here today. And uh, I think what's important is to underline once again, the very strong ties that exist between South Africa and the European Union made available through Horizon Europe. And of course, today we will have the announcement of the national contact uh, points. So all very important. So we're providing you today in this session, also information, not just on the Horizon program, but also specifically on the Africa Initiative too. And we are very pleased with our dynamic and ongoing strategic partnership. We have a very important partnership between South Africa and the European Union. It's multidimensional, it's positive, it is very dynamic. And research and innovation are center stage in that very important partnership. Uh, South Africa was an Africa front runner in terms of participation in Horizon 2020, which was a front runner of Horizon Europe. And we hope to keep it that way. And the national contact points that we're launching today, that we're announcing today, will be absolutely invaluable because they play an instrumental role in the visibility, in the communication, and to guide prospective researchers to our very important program, which overall stands at around 95 billion euros of support. 
So I'd like to thank you all in advance for your commitment to research and innovation and your contribution in maintaining this dynamic research and innovation environment. Uh, and that is necessary. It remains necessary to go for scientific breakthroughs. It helps to understand ourselves and the world better. It feeds into future generations of policies and programs, and it resolves our most persistent and challenging issues globally. And we've seen it with the global uh, COVID-19 pandemic, how science, technology, and innovation are critical for the survival and resilience of societies. But as Vinnie also said, climate change, public health care, human development, the digital revolution, in all that, scientists, engineers, researchers are no longer sitting on the periphery of economic and social planning. They're at the center of it. And the future of this planet depends on rigorous research, innovation and discoveries. So at a more regional level, we've also established a dialogue on research and innovation between the EU and the African Union to shape regional priorities and strategic areas of partnership in the field of science, technology, and innovation. South Africa is a major contributor across multiple thematic areas, including space, green energy, maritime, biodiversity, health sciences, and engineering. And these areas are supported through what we call Global Gateway, which was an initiative launched about a year ago when Africa leaders met with European leaders in Brussels in February, 2022. And for science, technology, and innovation, I want to specifically mention the AU-EU innovation agenda, the Earth observation and space, and the regional centers of excellence in the area of green transition. So we support our friends at the Department of Science and Innovation with whom we have a very positive relationship, especially through a program aimed at establishing a vibrant and cohesive national system of innovation. And that support program we are supporting very much because, as I said before, that leads to the development of new technologies, to innovative solutions, and to the solutions that we need all together. So I'd like to take this opportunity simply to congratulate DSI on the recent launch of the Decadel Plan, but also to just touch back on the World Science Forum. That was an amazing achievement. Uh, I was there, uh, the Director General of the Joint Research Center was there, and I think it's the first of its kind ever to have taken place in Africa. So I just congratulate DSI again for that wonderful achievement. Now, with that, I encourage all of you to take part in the discussions today, to look carefully at the opportunities, to look at joint projects, at exchanging knowledge, at refining methodologies, at developing new framework, at connecting, traveling to Europe or having the European scientists come over here, connect, the most important thing is that we engage and that we work together. And the national contact points, as well as the colleagues in the Department of Science and Innovation, as well as we at the European Union delegation here in South Africa and Christina Russo and her colleagues in Brussels, we stand totally at your disposal to support you in your future endeavors. So with that, I wanna thank you very much for um, being here today, for looking at these opportunities, and I wish you all a very, very productive exchange. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador, for those um, inspirational words and also reiterating the, the strength of our partnership and using this platform to move it to further, further areas and uh, looking at our researchers. And politically, we also have a possible high-level visit later on from commissioners, so we will look at that holistically. Um, on our program, we had Mr. Dan de Toy um, as, a, as our speaker. Um, he will provide a recorded message. Unfortunately, he has been called uh, to a parliamentary um, meeting. So Mr. Dan de Toy is the Deputy Director General for International Cooperation and Resources um, at the South African Department of Science and Innovation. Uh, if you can play the recording, thank you. I don't think we can hear the sound. Is the sound there? The sound is not there. No. Good morning, everyone. 
My name is Don de Tuey. I have the privilege to serve as Deputy Director General in the South African Department of Science and Innovation, where I'm responsible for the portfolio of international cooperation and resources. In the first instance, I would like to express my regret for not being able to, to join you in life, um, in person, so to speak, for this morning's important event, because other government commitments are making that impossible. Uh, but nevertheless, for the Department of Science and Innovation, our strategic partnership with the European Union necessitated my participation this morning. So in the first instance, I would like to convey my best wishes and greetings to my dear friend and, and colleague, uh, Christina Russo from the European Commission, someone who over many, many years has, has worked tirelessly in support of cooperation, not only between South Africa and European Union, but also Africa and the European Union in science and innovation. And if we are today going to be reviewing the exciting opportunities offered by the Africa Initiative of Horizon Europe, that is in no small part due to the tremendous investment by Christina and her team in this collaboration. I would also like to acknowledge the presence of the European Union's ambassador to South Africa, Ambassador Kramer. These are very exciting times for science and innovation in South Africa. Yes, South Africa is facing challenging economic ties, many important uh, challenges, uh, many important societal challenges to respond to. But more than ever, science and innovation is at the forefront of that response to reignite and boost economic growth and to make a decisive difference in the fight against poverty, unemployment and inequality. And to this effect, at the end of last year, South African cabinet approved South Africa's new decadal plan. That's a 10-year plan for science and innovation. But what is very important is that that is not a plan only for the Department of Science and Innovation or only for government, but a plan for all of South Africa, a plan for all of South Africa to collaborate to put science and innovation at the service of South African society. And within that context, International cooperation in science and innovation is recognized as a crucial component of, of this plan. And that is why this morning's event is so important for us in the department, because it is an opportunity to reinforce and strengthen international cooperation with a trusted, a valued and strategic partner such as the European Union. And there are, there are three key reasons I would like to highlight. In the first instance, throughout the ages, uh, throughout history, Science has always progressed when knowledge is shared across borders, when scientists meet, when scientists share facilities and, 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 and resources. And that is exactly what Horizon Europe enables to do. It is a unique instrument for international cooperation in science, an instrument which permits the frontiers of knowledge to be expanded. And we in South Africa, and certainly also my counterparts in other African countries, are extremely grateful to the European Union for the opening of Horizon Europe to the participation of South African scientists. So as an instrument through sharing and collaboration and cooperation um, to advance science, um, South Africa is firmly committed um, to work for mutual benefit with our partners in Europe, because indeed South African science uh, scientists have important contributions to make. But, but, but secondly, if science progresses, if science expands, it is to make that difference in responding to key societal challenges for which international cooperation is absolutely imperative. As we, we often say, global challenges require global responses. And whether it is in response to food security, pandemic disease, energy, uh, security, or indeed challenges of peace, peace and, and security. Science and innovation is required to make a response to uh, responding to these global challenges. And we have an excellent a firm foundation of South Africa and Europe working together, for example, as part of the European Developing Countries Clinical Trials Partnership, now known as the Global Africa EU Health Partnership, or within the framework of the Group on Earth Observations, or others where we join forces in the two, for example, respond to the COVID-19 pandemic to mitigate or adapt, adapt to, to climate change. And Horizon Europe and the Africa Initiative of Horizon Europe uh, offers exciting opportunities, valuable opportunities for South Africa and Europe to deepen our collaboration in, in, in this regard. But in, but in thirdly, 
international cooperation in science and the collaboration through Rise in Europe and also specific actions such as the Marie Curie Skodowska Curie or in the, uh, the, the Erasmus programs brings people together and it, it helps us to, to leverage that intrinsic value, that precious value of science to connect people across the artificial boundaries of language, of culture, of, of nationality. And in these fragile worlds where we are all aware of uh, rising geopolitical tension, we believe that science diplomacy as a force for reinforcing multilateralism, for reinforcing a global and a shared commitment to the global good is more important uh, than ever. So it's for this reason that the South African Department of Science and Innovation remains firmly committed to investing and support the participation of South African scientists in the Horizon Europe uh, framework program. We continue to, for example, support the uh, well-known ESASTA platform, which um, renders advisory and support services to South African scientists who wants to collaborate in, in European programs. And we also have different funding instruments for seed and co-investment, which we deploy in support of the Partnership of Europe. And it's within this context today that later this morning, we are, will be uh, announcing South Africa's dedicated network of national contact points for Horizon Europe. The, the network of national contact points, or NCPs, as they are better known, of course now over the past 20 years, because it's more than 20 years ago that the first NCP network for South Africa uh, for the European Union framework programs was established, has served that collaboration make extremely well. And we look forward to the new Horizon Europe NCP Network of South Africa making important contributions in sharing information, in broadening awareness, in supporting South African scientists' access to the opportunities offered by Horizon Europe. And in that regard, of course, a critical policy objective for science in South Africa is that of our transformation agenda, which specifically we will be looking to the NCPs to ensure that South Africa's historic, historically disadvantaged institutions and individuals enjoy enhanced access to the opportunities availed by Horizon Europe. But the Horizon Europe, as I've said earlier, why it's so important and why we attach value to this is because it's all about collaboration. It's all about connecting people. And that, that is really the key, the key area we would be looking to the NCPs to intervene. And that is to assist South African scientists and indeed the European partners. And this will be very important for the NCPs to work with their counterparts in Europe to connect South African and European organizations which wish and who have the opportunity to, to work together. And lastly, we're also looking forward to the NCPs to feed back to us as in the Department of Science and Innovation, and I'm sure to Christina and her team in the European Commission, concerns, proposals, um, experienced by the, the researchers, the innovators and, and, and entrepreneurs with regard to collaboration so that we can address this successfully at the level of our respective services and the different structures we have to support collaboration between South Africa and Europe. So thank you very much for, for this opportunity to speak to you this morning, albeit very briefly. The key message has been done that of key, uh, recommitted uh, support, uh, firm support from the Department of Science and Innovation to our partnership, our strategic partnership with the European Union in science and innovation, and our uh, looking forward with much expectation to collaboration between South Africa and Europe under the Africa Initiative of Horizon Europe and to the national network of national contact points. I would like to, uh, want to wish them well for their responsibilities. And they will certainly be able to, to count on the, the administrative and other support of the Department of, of Science and Innovation to, to Christina and the, to the team in, in Brussels. We certainly look forward to continued close collaboration with you, also in anticipation later this year of the South Africa European Union Summit, where we are confident science and innovation will again be celebrated as a success story which brings South Africa and Europe together. And then perhaps most importantly, to all the South African scientists, the innovators, the entrepreneurs who are participating in this, this webinar, uh, our strongest encouragement, our strongest encouragement for, for you to actively seek the opportunities which are availed by Horizon Europe, because they are well suited to make a, a difference in enhancing and reinforcing science in South Africa, global science, and ultimately uh, um, enabling us to put science as that valued instrument at the service of society, contributing to uh, the improvement of a quality of living of all. Thank you very much.
thanks to uh, to Mr. Detroit for those um, inspiring words. Um, again, the role of science and technology and innovation and um, across borders is coming out strongly. How we address our local challenges, very similar to the global challenges we face. Um, and we, uh, both from the Department of Science and Innovation, and uh, we will hear now from the European Commission, are also there to provide that support. So with that, I'd like to hand over to Ms. Maria Cristina Russo, the Director for Global Approach and International Cooperation at DG Research at the European Commission. Over to you. Thank you very much, uh, dear Vinny, and uh, good morning to everybody. Good morning to all participants from the research community, professors, researchers, innovators. Good morning to my colleagues, my colleagues from South Africa, um, my colleagues from Brussels, and uh, of course, uh, the colleagues from the DSI. Vinny, it's very difficult for me to, to say uh, some uh, significant words after the very engagement uh, um, opening remarks uh, of, uh, of uh, Dan Dutoy, that, Dutoy, that uh, although virtually he really passed very key messages. And let me also say to you, to all the um, research community of South Africa and the, one of the European Union, which is connected, that uh, for us, uh, research and innovation cooperation with South Africa is really a success story. Success story. Success stories are done by men and women. And I think that in this case, I really must acknowledge the great cooperation that we have with uh, the Deputy Director General, Dan Dutoit, with you, Vinnie, with all the department of the DSI, and um, me together with my colleagues, in particular, Nink Buisman, the head of unit, and of course, uh, Vincenzo Lorusso, who is uh, our uh, policy officer in charge of cooperation with South Africa, whom I thank very much, including for the organization of this event, uh, are very happy, privileged to be able to work with the DSI in order really to move ahead on this important area of cooperation with South Africa. And indeed, let me highlight here that uh, as uh, the ambassador, my dear friend Sandra Kramer, the EU ambassador to South Africa, hinted to, a research and innovation cooperation is a key pillar of the, of the framework EU-South Africa cooperation. And that's very important because what we are doing together it's not only beneficial to advancing uh, uh, research and innovation in order to tackle the global challenges, uh, joining forces uh, and being more impactful in, uh, in those important areas uh, such, such as health, uh, co uh, climate change, energy transition, and so on. But it's also a way to really um, tie, tie our, our cooperation to have stronger ties, uh, which really uh, make our communities, the European Union and the South African one closer, and thus we can uh, indeed participate uh, to strengthening the relations uh, at global level. Um, now, let me also say that uh, this is a very important seminar for us. I also would like to thank our friends from Air Access, Hamed, who is behind the organization of the seminar, because uh, as it was mentioned, there are two important elements in this, uh, in this uh, seminar. First of all, there will be the formal announcement of the South African network of national contact points for Horizon Europe. Uh, Dan already spoke about that. The national contact points have a vital a role to play because really they they are the, the, the they are the, the persons that uh, create those uh, uh, contacts which are necessary in order to mobilize the South African research community to first of all to know which are the opportunities stemming from the Horizon Europe program so to raise awareness and also to um, mobilize them in terms of participation provide training and also to try to build the, the links as much as possible with those uh, European uh, researchers uh, in order for the South African researchers uh, and innovators uh, to uh, form these consortia, which are in, instrumental in order to participate to the Horizon Europe uh, A program. As I said, uh, history is always done uh, by men and women. And I think that uh, um, with the engagement of the South African network of national contact point will be very, very important in order to further promote the very good cooperation between the EU and South Africa in research and innovation. And I will get back to that in a moment. The second aim of today's seminar, as it was mentioned, is to present 
the Africa Initiative of the Work Program 2023-2024 of Horizon Europe, which has a specific focus also in South Africa. Uh, without being too long and repeat what has been already said, let me highlight that uh, Horizon Europe is the European Union Research and Innovation Program. It is the biggest multilateral research and innovation program of the world. It's a program which uh, was launched in uh, 2021, following previous program. The previous program was called Horizon uh, 2020. And this program, Horizon Europe, has a, um, a duration of seven years and has a budget of 95.5 billion of euros. It covers the whole spe spectrum of areas uh, of uh, research and innovation. And uh, also it covers uh, basic research and uh, the research which is uh, with, uh, a, with a closer view to the market with higher tier. And what is really important for me to say today here is that the Horizon Europe program is completely open to the participation of researchers and innovators from outside Europe. Hence, all of you participants from South Africa, uh, from universities, from research uh, organizations, uh, innovators, uh, uh, can participate to the Horizon Europe program. And within this Horizon Europe program, we have different work programs, and we have just launched at the end of last year, the work program for the years 2023-24, which contains a specific Africa initiative which means that on the top of the, gen of the general opening of all the calls which are launched within the Horizon Europe program, general opening of calls, which means that African uh, researchers, South African researchers and innovators can participate. We have a specific call, Africa call, which has been specifically targeted in order to deal with the research uh, needs which uh, have been discussed both at technical and policy level between the European Union, the African Union, and South Africa. Indeed, um, as it was mentioned also by the ambassador, we have a long-standing cooperation with South Africa, both at bilateral level. Uh, we have a science and technology agreement uh, with South Africa, which was signed in 1997. And within this agreement, we regularly hold joint steering committee meetings, task force meetings. We had the last task force meeting in Nairobi in November. And within the context of those uh, meetings, we discussed together which are those areas of research cooperation that we should enhance and uh, we, that we should uh, um, translate then in concrete calls in the Horizon Europe program in order to, to tailor made them to the needs of EU South Africa, EU Africa cooperation, and to stimulate the participation of researchers from our continents. And then also, as it was mentioned, we have a regional dialogue, a regional dialogue between the European Union and the African Union in the field of research and innovation, where again, we discuss the priorities for research cooperation amongst the two continents, uh, both at technical level, and also we endorse them there also at the policy level. Let me recall that uh, I am very happy and was very proud that uh, after when we resumed from the first uh, very hard months of COVID in 2020, one uh, of, the, of the first uh, important big policy meeting that we organized was the first ever EU African Union Research and Innovation Ministerial Meeting that took place in July 2020 after we went through three really difficult months where which have shown if needed uh, uh, if the, if there would there would have been a need but they have shown how much importance has uh, research and innovation cooperation in in field of health like uh, in all the other uh, fields which are related to it and in fact, with this ministerial meeting, we have endorsed the, uh, the priorities that had been discussed at the level of, uh, of uh, experts between the African Union and the European Union. And we have paved the way for launching what is now the Africa Call. 
the Africa 2 call, which is included in Horizon uh, Europe Work Programme for 2023-24. I will not say more on that because my colleagues will present the, this call in details. I just would like to say that we really hope that with these calls, specific in the calls within the Africa Initiative, which are specifically designed to address the need uh, in terms of research innovation of the EU and the African Union, uh, we can further enhance the participation of uh, researchers from the African continent and from South Africa in particular, because as I already mentioned, we have very, very important strategic cooperation with South Africa within the context of the overall cooperation with Africa. Let me just uh, give you some, um, some examples uh, in order to frame this, uh, this cooperation. Um, the, um, I, I would like to say that South Africa ranks fifth for participation and third for budget in the Horizon Europe program among third countries. Whereas in the previous program, in the Horizon 2020 program, it ranked seventh for participation and fourth in budget share. So it means that it's really for South Africa participation to the research and innovation programs in the EU has already increased from the previous program to this one. But uh, here it's a, a ranking amongst the, all the countries outside Europe. But let me highlight that uh, within the context of the African countries, South Africa is the first participant, is the first participant uh, from the African country in the uh, research innovation program Horizon uh, Europe um, now and 2020 beforehand. What I would like to say uh, before concluding also is that uh, the success rate of South African participation is very, very high. South Africa has a su success rate of 28%, which is impressive if you consider that the current average at the EU level is 21.80. So just to say that uh, when South African researchers decide to participate, they have very, very high chance to, um, to, to, to be um, getting the, the projects to go through the, the procedures, which would be explained um, later on. Now, these are very good dates, um, data, but I think that uh, we can do much more in order to step up our cooperation and especially to ensure a more widespread participation among South African um, higher education research institutions. And that is where the National uh, Contact Points Network can play a very important role. For example, I would like to highlight that seven different South African universities have been granted so far the Horizon Europe projects. And uh, I, we believe that, uh, that it is important that it would, it would be beneficial that more participants are uh, um, granted Horizon Europe projects. Uh, that's why uh, the, the National Contact Points Network uh, will have a very important role to play in order to mobilize more actors. And I hope that this seminar uh, to which I see we have a participation of more than 200 uh, people will be also very, very useful in order to further spread the opportunities that stem uh, from the Horizon Europe uh, program, from the 2023-24 uh, Africa 2 initiative. And, um, and I really um, hope that uh, will give you the tools and the willingness to step up this cooperation. Let me conclude uh, by saying that, uh, um, that uh, of course, we look forward to continue to work uh, uh, with South Africa as a privileged partner uh, with which we share um, a mutual interest in stepping up uh, cooperation in research and innovation. In this dramatic moment uh, that we are going through, uh, one year after the illegal Russian invasion of Ukraine, it's even more important that we join forces in order to really tackle together the challenges that, uh, that uh, the world 
is going through. Uh, we need to, to, to be active in order to find solutions to the food shortage, to the energy efficiency, and to many other challenges. And that is also uh, where we want to work. We want to work with South Africa. And I'm very happy to announce to you that uh, um, together with the South African government and the EU delegation to South Africa, we will be organizing an African Union, European Union Innovation Festival on the 15th of June in Cape Town. This innovation festival uh, is, uh, should be an opportunity for us uh, to, um, to, to, to follow the launching of the EU African Union Innovation Agenda, which uh, is a very important tool of our cooperation between the EU and the African Union, which uh, is, um, is going to be adopted um, in Addis Abeba on the 13th of June, and to which South Africa has also participated extensively. So we will be organizing this African Union, European Union Innovation Festival, and our Commissioner for Research and Innovation, Commissioner Gabriel, will be participating there, together with uh, the course, South African Minister for Research and Education. More details will come soon, and I hope that uh, I will see many of you in person in this event. And for, um, for the moment, I wish you a very, very fruitful seminar. And uh, I hope that uh, with the information you received today, you will be even more motivated uh, to uh, step up your cooperation in research and innovation with uh, the European Union. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Russo. I mean, I, I think the, the important part of our collaboration is it has the highest level of support from our political principals, uh, commissioner, ministers. Uh, of course, South Africa doesn't work in isolation. We work with our partners on the African continent. And I think the points you make uh, resonate very strongly uh, with how we would like to use science and technology and innovation together in uh, the international cooperation and addressing of, of challenges. Um, I would like to, to thank our esteemed speakers uh, for our opening. Um, we would now move on to the next segment. As you would have heard um, from the opening, uh, the role of our national contact points and the critical role and strategic role they play in assisting research communities on both sides to network, to gain access to programs and also encouraging a more widespread inclusion of participation. And I think that's quite a very important point um, that Ms. Russo also raised uh, from the South African uh, perspective. So with that, I just want to hand over to Ms. Tugela Matuba Tuba, who's the Director for Strategic Partnerships um, at the Department of Science and Innovation. Um, and she will take us through the announcement of the, and launch, of the national contact points uh, for South Africa for Horizon Europe. Over to you, thanks. Um, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Pillay. Um, am I audible? Okay. Um, I'd like to start off by acknowledging um, Her Excellency the Ambassador, Ambassador Kramer, um, the Director, Ms. Christina Russo, and the Deputy Director General, Mr. Dan Dutoy, and then the Pro Program Director, Ms. Uh, Vinnie Pele. And I would also like to say all protocol um, observed. Uh, as introduced, I am uh, Tugela Matubatuba Samini. I am the Director for Strategic Partnerships at the Department of Science and Innovation. And our directorate is responsible for the overall management of the South Africa EU Science, Technology and Innovation Corporation. Um, we are also responsible for the overall coordination of the National Contact Point Network for South Africa. I'm very honored to be given this role, to be the one announcing um, the National Contact Points for South Africa but I would like to maybe start off by highlighting the um, thematic areas of um, Horizon Europe. I know uh, Dr. LaRusso will touch on this slide in detail, um, just to give context on where our national content points are based. So most of them will be based in pillar one, um, which focuses on excellent science. That's where you find uh, programs like the European Research Council, the Marie Skorowska Curie Actions and Research Infrastructures, and as well as 
pillar two, which focuses on global challenges and European industrial competitiveness. That's where you'll also get the different um, thematic areas um, where our NCPs will be based. We also have an NCP for Euratom, which um, focuses on nuclear sciences. Um, I'd like to first announce the appointment of Ms. Chichana Chelsea. Um, she is the head for our National Intellectual Property Management Office in South Africa. She is appointed as the legal and finance national contact point. point. Our second national contact point is based at um, NEXA. Um, this is for the Euratom thematic area, as I had mentioned, which focuses mainly on nuclear sciences. His name is Mr. Dankiso Mudise. He is the project manager um, at our um, NEXA institution in South Africa. Um, for the interest of time, uh, Ms. Pile, I'll just briefly touch on the um, the, 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 the the national contact points without going into detail into their biographies because most of this information will be available after the session. Our next national contact point under pillar one, um, excellent science is Dr. Aldo Strubel. Dr. Strubel is the executive director at the National Research Foundation and responsible for strategic partnerships. He is appointed as the national contact point for the European Research Council. Following that is um, Ms. Prudence Makura, who is the Director for Collaborative International Research Grant at the National Research Foundation. Ms. Prudence is appointed as the Maris Klodowska Curie Actions um, National Contact Point. She also has um, quite an experience in this program as she served as the National Contact Point for Marie Curie Actions in Horizon 2020. I'd like to also announce the appointment of Dr. Carol Maputi Madeja, who is the Deputy Director recently appointed um, the Department of Science and Innovation, um, responsible for emerging researchers programs. She's coming from the National Research um, Foundation as well. She has a doctoral um, degree in public health from Sikfaho Mahato University. She will serve as the assistant national contact point for the Maris Klodowska Curie Actions as well as the European Research Council. Dr. Madiha has been recently awarded her PhD and I would like to then say congratulations to her in that regard. Our next NCP under pillar one, is, is for research infrastructure is Mr. Daniel Mukhosane. He is the deputy director responsible for cy cyber security at the Department of Science and Innovation. He has been appointed as the NCP for research infrastructure. Moving to pillar two, um, focusing on global challenges and European industrial competitiveness. We have our national contact point for the health thematic area, who is Mr. Bruce Chilamulele. He is the deputy director for health innovation at the Department of Science and Innovation. Our second thematic area focuses on culture, creativity, and inclusive society. And for that thematic area, we have appointed Dr. Palisa Sikheshane, who is the Director for Strategic Partnerships at the Human Sciences Research Council. Um, she will serve as the NCP for that thematic area. Working together with Dr. Sikheshane, we also have Mr. Ifram Palafala, who is the Deputy Director um, at the Department of Science and Innovation, responsible for innova um, innovation, responsible for science, technology, and innovation in sustainable human settlements. Um, he will be assisted by Mr. Diane Ngobeni, who is the uh, Deputy Director for S Science and Technology for Sustainable Human Settlements. Um, both of them will have a specific um, focus on the inclusive society element of the culture, creativity, and inclusive society thematic area. Still in pillar two, uh, moving to the digital industry and space thematic area, we have Ms. Fikiswa Majola, who is the director for deputy director for space systems. Um, she will focus mainly on the space um, thematic area for this particular um, theme. 
She will be assisted by Ms. Asanda Sangoni, who is the Space and Stakeholder Liaison Specialist at our South African uh, Space Agency, SANSA. Uh, Ms. Sangoni, together with Ms. Majola, will focus on the space thematic area. The following theme is the climate, energy, and mobility thematic area, and we have Mr. Mbangiseni Mabudafasi, who is the Deputy Director responsible for power at the Department of Science and Innovation within the Hydrogen and Energy Chief Directorate. He will focus on the energy part of the climate, energy, and mobility thematic area. Um, still on the climate, energy, and mobility thematic area, we have Ms. Kwagilam Govinda, who is the Deputy Director for Global Change and Sustainability. She has quite an extensive experience because she's also served as the NCP for Horizon 2020. She will focus on the climate element of that particular thematic area. Moving to the next thematic area, which focuses on food, bioeconomy, natural resources, agriculture, and environment, we have Dr. Tabang Bambo, who is the deputy director for, um, uh, uh, for biotechnology and agriculture at the Department of Science and Innovation. He will focus on the food, bioeconomy, and agriculture elements of that particular thematic area. We also have Ms. Kwagilam Govenda, who will then take um, the natural resources and environment thematic area of the bioeconomy, natural resource, agriculture, and environment thematic area. Last but not least, um, we have been working very closely with our sister department, which is the Department of Higher Education and Training. And I'm pleased to announce that um, the Erasmus Plus program has now been officially handed over to the Department of Higher Education and Training, and they are coordinating that particular uh, program. And I am pleased to announce Dr. Mteto Moyo, who is the Acting Director for Global Change and Sustainability. He is the national contact point for the Erasmus Plus program. I would also like to touch on the type of support of which the DDG and Ms. Pile have already touched on uh, from the Department of Science and Innovation through the ESSTA platform. We do have a dedicated website um, and I would like to encourage um, the participants, if you're not already registered, to please register uh, so that you will be able to receive the information pertaining to opportunities within the South Africa EU STI cooperation. And this is where we also um, aim to have a dedicated page for the national contact points where we would um, list their um, uh, responsibilities as well as how to contact the national contact points. The financial support also available was already touched on is in a form of seed funding. For Horizon Europe, the Department of Science and Innovation can afford seed funding to South African researchers to, to travel to Europe to go and meet with their European partners to finalize um, proposals. It's not meant for South African uh, researchers to go and find partners, but to meet partners in order for them to finalize the proposals for the cause. We also have co-investment support, uh, mainly for the co-fund programs, as well as other programs that may need um, top up uh, within Horizon Europe. Um, the national contact point that we are already announcing today will also play an important role in ensuring that um, the South African national system of innovation receives the necessary guidance, support, as well as advice in terms of participating in the framework program. So these national contact points will be available also through the, the ESSTAB website should you need more details. We do have a dedicated office in Brussels um, that we work closely with uh, from the Strategic Partnerships Directorate. And the main aim of the office is, is to also um, strengthen our cooperation in terms of the policy dialogue with the European um, Union, as well as advise the department in terms of which programs um, to participate in and what appropriate support instruments to provide for the national system of innovation. These are the important um, websites to take into consideration 
And should you need to contact our NCP for now, you can send an email to contact at isastap.org.za. Um, I would like to end there and then thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Ms. Matuba Tuba, and congratulations to the South African uh, National Contact Points. I think this is uh, an important milestone. Um, you've heard in, in the various uh, opening um, speeches the role that the NCPs will play in engaging the South African researchers together with other European researchers, but also seeking opportunities to collaborate. And I think what was quite um, important in Ms. Russo's presentation when she spoke about the statistics um, of South Africa's participation in Horizon, and there is, of course, room to improve on that. Um, and of course, we all work for the global good in terms of science and having South African researchers working closely with their European counterparts through our facilitation by our national contact points is very important. And I think that leads us quite nicely into the next segment because here's where the opportunities are going to be presented. So the next part of our agenda is around the, the new opportunities, but specifically around um, Horizon Europe and the Africa Initiative 2. And I will hand over to Dr. Vincenzo uh, LaRusso. He's the Policy Officer for EU-Africa Cooperation on um, Science, Technology and Innovation at the DG for Research in the European Commission. Over to you. Thank you very much, Vinny. And a very good morning to all of you colleagues from South Africa to Europe to elsewhere. I'm very, very pleased and honored to, to be here among you today. Uh, please bear with me for a couple of seconds while I try to display my screen in the best possible way, getting rid of all the uh, panels that you may see as black box. Just a sec. Can you confirm you see nothing apart from my presentation or you still saw some black boxes? It's okay now. Just trying to. It looks fine. It's, it looks fine. Okay, because I still see a black square. Trying to, to get rid of that. Okay, well, uh, I'll get started. So, uh, yes, a uh, very good morning once again, colleagues. Uh, I'm David Vincenzo Russo from the European Commission, DG Research and Innovation. And I've got the honor and the pleasure to be dealing indeed with the EU Africa cooperation at multilateral level and also bilaterally with a country indeed such as South Africa. So this presentation will focus really on two uh, parts. We will start by looking at uh, Horizon Europe and the international cooperation dimension within that. And we will then move into the details of the so-called Africa Initiative 2 part of Horizon Europe framework program uh, particularly of its work program 2023-2024, but we will do that also by looking at what has been done in terms of result, results, what has been achieved by South Africa and by South Africa-based research institutions within the first work program of Horizon Europe, so within the time span of the years 2021-2022. We've heard this before, so I'm not going to take too much time on this. Horizon Europe, as we speak, is the largest uh, public funding uh, program to research and innovation at global level, uh, which will last for approximately uh, for seven years. So it's a framework program that, la program that lasts for 2021 until 2027. It uh, amounts to approximately 100 billion uh, euros, so 95.5 billion, uh, billion euros. The international cooperation dimension within Horizon uh, Europe really stems from the uh, EU communication on the so-called global approach to research and innovation that you see crystallized in, in some of the main takeaways in here. So what does this EU global approach to research and innovation communication, which was published and adopted in May 2021, say? It really, uh, let's say, uh, can be uh, considered around, built around some important pillars, such as preserve openness 
in research and in innovation cooperation, and uh, while promoting a level playing field and reciprocity underpinned by a fundamental level. At the same time, the global approach to research and innovation also foresees uh, to strengthen multilateral partnerships to deliver new solutions to green digital health and innovation challenge. At the same time, it also uh, foresees the modulation of bilateral cooperation in line with the European interests and values of the EU's open strategic autonomy. And then importantly enough, aims to accelerate sustainable and inclusive development, really stemming from the realization that research and innovation play a critical role and as a fundamental role, as we heard before in the opening addresses, in really uh, contributing to sustainable socioeconomic development at global level, not just in Europe or in Africa, but really at global level, especially when we tackle global challenges, basically joining forces to really find mutual solutions, of course, or common challenges. So really, if I try to summarize what are the core values, the core principles of the EU global approach to research and innovation, I try to really put them in here, commitment to openness, values and principles, such as uh, academic freedom, uh, gender equality, open science, pursuit of a level playing field and reciprocity, and the importance of pulling global efforts to tackle global challenges. Now, let me also say that vis-a-vis -vis African countries in particular, the uh, EU global approach to research and innovation foresees particular openness, indeed for vis-a-vis -vis countries that want to thrive as knowledge-based economies. And I also take this opportunity to thank uh, really all the colleagues from the DSI, but also, of course, from the SSTAP network and, uh, of course, Eraxis uh, Africa and the colleagues from the EU delegation to South Africa for their great help in in not only the preparation of today's event, but also in making my presentation easier because indeed they provided some instrumental introductions to what, I be, uh, what I'm talking about now, including the fact that when we look at the Horizon Europe overall structure, as uh, Tugela kindly said, you will see it is organized around three pillars. And of course, the, uh, as you also heard from, heard from Tugela, the, uh, most of the calls for proposals are indeed organized according to clusters that are part of pillar two. These clusters are basically the thematic areas in which the topics organized in course proposals could be found. And you see these are those of health, culture, creativity, and inclusive society, civil security for society, digital industry and space, climate, energy, and mobility, food by economy, natural resources, agriculture, and environment. And of course, today we will also hear about other pillars of the framework program Horizon Europe, namely pillar one, Indeed, following this presentation, we will also hear from Maria, a colleague from DG uh, Education and, and, and Culture and Youth, DG ERC, that will be presenting opportunities that are uh, in, 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 included, encapsulated in the so-called Maris Clodos Curie Actions, also known under the acronym very often of MCSA. So really, as also my director, our director, Christina Russo, mentioned in an opening address, what is important to keep in mind is that Horizon Europe is by default a program that is open to almost all countries. It is indeed open to all African countries, regardless of the calls for proposals. Today, when we will put emphasis on the so-called African Initiative 2 and on the calls for proposals that this initiative comprises, it doesn't mean that any other calls in Horizon Europe cannot be accessible or cannot be applicable for indeed uh, scientists coming from South Africa and research entities coming from South Africa. Absolutely not. So those are open as well. Uh, of course, we will put emphasis on the African Initiative too, because indeed we think that uh, from a topic point of view, in light of the corporate, in light of the cooperation priorities of the AU-EU cooperation research and innovation, and of course also in light of the priority of the priorities of the bilateral cooperation between the EU and South Africa, the calls of the African Initiative too are indeed the most pertinent, the most fitting from a strategic point of view, indeed to step up and strengthen this cooperation. Now, you may have also heard that within the Horizon Europe Framework Programme, there are some countries that are the so-called associated countries, countries that belong to the so-called association groups. As we speak, there are 16 countries. You can see their names in here. And these are countries that contribute to the funding of the Framework Programme. That is currently not the case of South Africa, but that again, that does not prevent 
any South Africa based research entities from applying indeed and from being eligible to the cost proposals. Specifically for the case of the African continent, you can see that Tunisia is currently the only one African country that is indeed an associated country to the framework program Horizon Europe with ongoing discussions with regard to another country uh, of Africa, Morocco indeed. You will also, for your information, you will also find in here, and I also take this opportunity to reassure all the participants, I believe this has also been answered in the live chat, that all these presentations, not just mine, but also the previous one by Tugela and the following ones, will be entirely accessible on the Oraxis Africa webpage, actually in the same page that you kind of use for registration purposes. You will see that appearing all the presentations as PDF, including the recording of today's session in there, already starting from today end of the day and as well uh, at the latest tomorrow morning uh, so you will also by clicking on this uh, hyperlink here you'll be able to find the entire list of low and middle, in the, in the middle income countries that are automatically eligible for eu funding within the framework uh, program and again there are exceptions uh, that apply on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis uh, but this is certainly not the case of uh, eu countries and certainly not of south africa as we speak so the international cooperation within Horizon Europe, that's the take home that I'd like to leave you with from this slide, is actually quite conspicuous within the framework program. Uh, roughly, uh, well, approximately 22%, well, 22% precisely, of the cost proposals are encouraging specifically international cooperation within Horizon Europe for a work program 2023-2024. And they are very much widespread across the thematic areas. You will see this more in detail in the case of the African Initiative Call. Now, not only some of the calls are indeed uh, open to specifically encouraging international cooperation, but we decided to do more and to uh, apply and provide extra thrust to the cooperation with certain strategic re geographic regions that are represented in the strategic partnerships for the European Union. One of them being the, the African continent, the African Union, through the Africa Initiative, and another one being the uh, Mediterranean, so Northern Africa and the Middle Eastern region through the Mediterranean Initiative. As you've also heard from uh, the opening addresses, the African Initiative is now uh, in its second edition, because indeed we started this adventure in the first work program uh, of uh, Horizon Europe 2021-2022. So this is the second indeed edition of the African Initiative and is really building on the successes that hopefully I will be able to demonstrate through the next few slides, including for South Africa, of the African Initiative one. That doesn't mean that we are entirely satisfied with what we've done so far. We are indeed encouraged and happy about it, but we want to do more and we believe we can certainly do so indeed by uh, making uh, and ensuring the participation of research and higher education institutions in indeed more widespread and indeed becomes wider, including us at African level. And really the take home of this table is really the average percentage of the international cooperation dimension across the clusters of pillar one of the framework program, the work program 2023-24 is indeed uh, roughly on average 20%. Now let's move specifically into the cooperation between the European Union and the African Union in research and innovation. Now Africa is indeed a strategic partner to the European Union and of course the partnership within research and innovation is a, a key fundamental one as you heard earlier on also from the Excellency Ambassador Kramer indeed the uh, cooperation research and innovation between uh, the uh, South Africa and European Union is, is extremely agile, is extremely dynamic and really uh, vibrant. Uh, that falls also into a broader uh, multilateral cooperation that from the EU side is guided by two key publications. These are the uh, number one towards the uh, comprehensive EU strategy with Africa, which was published in March 2020. And that in a nutshell says that we really propose us that we really need to scale up the EU's cooperation with Africa in uh, academic and scientific partnerships with a view to creating prosperous knowledge societies. And then the second one that I already mentioned is the global approach to research and innovation that was adopted in May 2021, that as I also refer to foresee specific openness vis-a-vis -vis African countries. Indeed, they want to thrive for the attainment of sustainable and inclusive uh, development. Now, from a policy framework standpoint, the multilateral cooperation between the European Union and the African Union is governed under the aegis of the so-called 
AUEU High Level Policy Dialogue HLPD on Science, Technology and Innovation, which was established in 2010. And it represents really the policy framework, the platform where the long term policy priorities for this cooperation are indeed set up. And it is indeed under the ages of this policy dialogue that the first ever ministerial meeting, you heard this also from my director before, took place in July 2020, at the time in Tari Virtual. And one of the main outcomes of this ministerial meeting was the fact that the four areas, four thematic areas, were really crystallized at the time as the four priority areas of the EU-AU cooperation in research and innovation. You can see them in here. They are public health, green transition, innovation and technology, and capacities for science. Very much, of course, linked to capacity building, as you can imagine, with innovation and technology and capacities for science being inevitably of quite a cross-cutting nature. Now, this cooperation was also, of course, referred to in the course of the EU-AU summit that took place in uh, uh, beginning February last year in Brussels, during which the EU Africa Global Gateway or the Global Gateway Africa Europe Investment Package was announced. It is a, an overall initiative with an overall budget of 150 billion euros that has three dedicated flagships that are indeed that have indeed a specific focus on science, technology, and innovation. And you find them in here, one of them being the AU EU innovation agenda, the second one, Earth Observation in Space, and the third one, regional centers of excellence in the area of green transition. Now we haven't got the details to go through all of them because indeed we will be linking them to with the Africa Initiative to Horizon Europe, but I'd like to spend a few words on the joint AU-EU innovation agenda, which from a policy standpoint will represent the uh, mainstay of the policy cooperation of the uh, EU, AU Africa, EU, AU cooperation, excuse me, on research and innovation. It also represents an outcome of the first ever ministerial meeting of July 2020, where ministers from the AU and EU of research and innovation, including, of course, both commissioners, uh, decided that more had to be done to make sure we ensure the translation of research and innovation into tangible, positive impact on the ground, namely products, services, jobs, and business opportunities in both Africa and Europe. This AU innovation agenda includes four objectives that are then articulated into short, medium, and long-term actions according to the four priority areas that I mentioned earlier on, plus an additional area, which is the one of cross-cutting issues, because indeed spans across the four aforementioned areas as well. And really, this document derives from a, a wide identification and mapping of gaps and needs at the level of research and innovation ecosystems across the two continents. These are the weeks, the days where we are currently uh, finalizing this AU innovation agenda that was published as a working document as a draft last year, and that was subject to a very wide dialogue, stakeholder dialogue consultation throughout 2022. And I'm very pleased to see among today's participants a lot of the names of colleagues and friends you know, really uh, took part in the stakeholder dialogue. I take this opportunity also to thank them on behalf of the dedicated task force working on this agenda for their very valuable input and feedback that they provided in, to on the agenda, which please let me assure you will be entirely integrated within the final version of the agenda. And the final version of the agenda will then be presented for adoption during the second AUEU RNI ministerial meeting that you heard also heard on before, which will take place in Addis Ababa on June 13th this year. And you will find that this is an excerpt of the final declaration of the sixth EU-AU summit that took place in February last year, where the joint AU innovation agenda is acknowledged as a means to uh, really support the cooperation between the researchers of Africa and Europe to develop knowledge together, as well as sharing technology and expertise. Uh, this really, in a nutshell, uh, summarizes what the ambitions and some of the ambitions of the AU innovation agenda are. But from there, let us move into South Africa's performance so far in Horizon Europe. And perhaps, uh, hopefully, it shouldn't surprise you the fact that while putting in place an Africa Initiative 2 part of the work program 2023-2024 of Horizon Europe, we also uh, think strategically to provide through that one of the instruments that will enable the implementation of the short term of some of the short term and medium term actions of the AU EU innovation agenda following its adoption in June this year. Uh, 
So how has South Africa and South Africa-based research institutions have performed in Horizon Europe so far? Let us have a closer look in here. So let us start by having an overall picture. In this slide here, you can see in the top half, the performance in Horizon 2020 of the top 28 African Union countries. And then in the second lower half of the slide, you see the performance of the top 28 African countries uh, in Horizon Europe thus far, of course. So this is a partial, a partial, a partial excuse me, snapshot. And what we can say as a takeaway is that South Africa has been the front runner, indeed, as you heard before, for both Horizon 2020 and Horizon Europe, excuse me, for all African countries. If we look at the more general overview, South Africa ranks fifth for participation and third for budget in Horizon Europe among third countries. So among countries that are not um, associated nor EU and uh, it ranked seventh for participation and fourth in budget share at the end of Horizon 2020. So already overall, South Africa is doing better than compared to uh, its performance in Horizon 2020, and it still is indeed the first among African countries. As Director Russo also mentioned, the success rate of South Africa in Horizon Europe is quite impressive, 28.1%, while keeping in mind that the average success rate of EU countries, as we speak, is 21.8, so seven percentage points higher indeed in the case of South Africa. And the average one from top 28 African countries is even lower, is of 19%, which by the way, I also take this opportunity to say that it's not bad after all really, especially if we look at the variabilities across countries. So far, and again, apologies, this is our real-time data that we get from the dashboards, the public dashboards of Horizon. I also take this opportunity that indeed, as we speak, it's 79 rather than just 70 uh, proposals that have been retained coming from South Africa and Horizon Europe, which means 79 projects are being granted, have been or are being granted for South Africa-based research entities within Horizon Europe. More details to follow in the next slides. And this is the overall placement of South Africa, in this case, including associated countries. If we include non-EU associated countries, then South Africa ranks eight rather than fifth. And again, uh, from a participation, from a budget share, excuse me, point of view, and 10th, for participation. So it's still uh, really uh, performing uh, very well indeed. And of course, more can and should be done. And that's really, these are the key figures with regards to South African rise of Europe thus far. So you can see uh, 57 plus 15 grants, uh, 57 have already been uh, signed and I, are really about to start or have started. 15 are in the process of being started. So overall, 72 granted projects, uh, amounting to 23.35 million euros of net EU contribution and equalizing, well, and being equal, excuse me, to 83 participations, which means that 83 uh, research entities uh, coming from South Africa are indeed involved in research uh, projects of Horizon Europe so far. This is the trend of South Africa in the framework program of uh, Horizon, uh, of Horizon, well, in the framework program of Horizon Europe thus far, compared to the other uh, framework programs in general. Uh, the participation trend is seen in here, and the budget uh, contribution uh, to South Africa based research entities is also shown in here. So if South Africa keeps uh, following this, this trend, uh, having this trend, I think it'll be well before the end of the Horizon Europe that will have uh, guarded uh, funding indeed that is comparable uh, to the overall funding uh, from which benefited uh, throughout the seven year period of Horizon 2020. So in terms of thematic areas, where is most of the funding going in terms of projects with regard to South Africa based research entities? Well, and we can see that uh, by economy, natural resources and agriculture is taking together with health, the majority of the retained proposals. So health 17 uh, and uh, bioeconomy, natural resources and agriculture, 16 of them, followed then right after by Marie Skolowska Curie Actions, of which we will hear about later on uh, after my presentation, which is indeed about researchers and scientists' mobility. So also uh, very important. I would say these are indeed the three top areas, followed right after by climate, energy and mobility, digital industry and space with seven uh, retained proposals and the four projects, in, uh, uh, in both cases. Now, of course, I, I trust we all believe, also having looked at the uh, wide uh, diversity, and I take this opportunity also on my behalf as well to 
uh, congratulate and commend the work done by the colleagues at the DSI in terms of uh, specific appointments of NCPs and NCPs assistants across these clusters. I believe that really this provides the great foundation now to make sure we enhance the participation across these domains, including in climate, energy and mobility, where I believe South Africa has a lot indeed to provide uh, to the global community as well in digital industry with that too. In terms of the uh, type of actions that are part of the uh, framework programs, we see that the majority of the projects that have been granted to South Africa and Rise of Europe are the so-called research and innovation actions, uh, 49 of them, followed then by uh, Maris Kroloska Curie actions, then coordination and support action six, and pure innovation actions that have, as Director Russo also referred to, a slightly higher technology readiness level compared to the RA, RIA, so the research and innovation actions. So therefore, slightly less earlier stage compared to the RIA. And here you see 12 out of the 72 projects that involve South Africa uh, uh, or South Africa-based uh, research entities. In this case, I provided really the top funded, the in terms of the top place in terms of funding uh, from top to, to bottom, you'll be able to see more details on them by just clicking on the link that will bring you to CORDIS, which is the overall project database uh, for Horizon Europe. Uh, you see a few of them, innovative SMEs. I'm just going to go through some of the acronyms with approximately 70 million euro contributions. Biodiversa Plus with 40, Water for Hall, Isidore uh, with uh, 26 and 21 approximately respectively funding million euros. As you can see, there's a rather uh, diverse, broad diversity of topics from uh, indeed innovation to uh, food by economy, natural resources and research infrastructures. And again, we get also to digital industry and space and health, uh, importantly enough, with two projects uh, focusing indeed on uh, COVID-19 and also on the pediatric importance and the pediatric side of the infection. So really uh, quite a diversity. And of course, this is only a partial view, the 12th top funded out of the 72 projects granted so far. And in terms of institutions benefiting from the funding and importantly participating, in other words, in the projects, we can see that approximately, well, 45% of the funding is going to South Africa higher education or secondary education establishments, followed then by 22% going to private sector, a private for profit entity, excuse me, private, private higher education or secondary education establishments, and then 17% of the funding going to uh, uh, other institutions, basically uh, NGOs or civil society organizations, 12%, and also this, this other includes also the private sector, such as SMEs, and we will see this more in detail later on, and research organizations of that are not high education institutions or purely research institutions in the case of 12% of the funding. Almost 4% of the funding goes to public bodies, such as government institutions, and so on and so forth. And in terms of participation, this reflects pretty much the funding, but we can see that there's a wider participation across the higher or secondary education establishment, 61%, with approximately 13% for private higher education or secondary education institutions, followed then by 10% uh, approximately private sector and uh, CSOs and NGOs, and 9% public bodies, uh, public research, excluding, excluding, excluding uh, research organizations such as government institution, and then almost 8% to purely research organization uh, structures. Let's have a look at some of the names. These are all the funded institutions that have been indeed that are participating in Rise of Europe projects from South Africa. You will recognize uh, the names, I believe, and I believe the all of you or some of you or the majority of you, excuse me, are indeed coming from these organizations. I just grouped them in terms of funding. I think we see two big trends, three big trends, excuse me, in here. We see a block of the um, you know, those organizations that are benefiting from more than a million euro in terms of net euro contributions. And you can see it's WITS Health Consortium, LTD, University of Cape Town, UCT, Stellenbosch University, and uh, also uh, ICLE Local Governments for Sustainability Africa, University of KwaZulu Natal, and University of Pretoria, and Center for Bilars and Tropical Health Research. Then we see a second block, if I could call it like that, of institutions that are benefiting from funding, that have benefited from funding so far of lower than a million, but still between 500k, 500,000 euros, and 800,000 euros. And then a second block, well, we see the funding so far has been lower than 500,000 euros, but still up to, uh, to really 50,000, 
And you can see the institutions in it. Now, of course, these numbers can only grow, but importantly, also the list we want it to grow and we will have to grow indeed. I'm also very happy to say that the participation of SMEs of small and medium enterprises from South Africa has been quite conspicuous so far with 11 SMEs that are participating for an overall support of 4 million uh, euros really, and these are the names of the SMEs that we see in this. One of them, uh, where we've seen the run so far. So one of them benefited from 2.3 million euros is the case of Atli Local Governments for Sustainability Africa, then South Africa Urban Food and Farming Trust, and so on and so forth. So really, these are some of the SMEs. And I'd like to also highlight the importance indeed of diversifying the funding and the importance indeed of uh, having the private sector on board in research and innovation cooperation and programs private sector being fundamental indeed to ensuring the research innovation really translates into products, services, and therefore reaches the market and end users indeed. And in terms of top collaborations, when it comes to uh, other countries, indeed with which South Africa is collaborating within the framework program, work program 2021-2022, let's see the top uh, uh, collaborators. These are Germany in the decreasing order, descending order, Germany, Italy, France, Netherlands, Spain and UK and Belgium. So really the collaborations are quite wide. This is only the top uh, collaborators because I could not fit them in just one slide also for, you know, given the limited time. But so it's 83 countries that so far with which so far uh, South Africa is collaborating within the projects of Horizon Europe. And these are the top uh, ones out of the 83 countries. So in this is quite a list and of course can only become uh, bigger, larger, and of course, the links can also become stronger. Now, from these results, with these results in mind, let us move to Africa Initiative 2. What is it about? It is about, indeed, a, a bundle of approximately 30 topics that are organized in course for proposals, amounting to approximately 300 million euros. The ultimate goal is, indeed, to boost the EU-Africa cooperation research and innovation, and with that, the EU-South Africa cooperation in research and innovation. Uh, I also heard, I also said this before, it represents a way for indeed to, to, to enable the implementation of some of the short and medium term actions of the AU EU innovation agenda, uh, aiming to translate research and innovation into tangible uh, positive outcomes on the ground. And uh, the uh, topics are very much organized in the three out of four areas of the priority areas of the EU Africa cooperation. These are green transition, to which approximately 260 million euros of funding goes, then innovation and technology with 35 million euros, capacities for science with approximately 10 million euros. You, you would see that there is not explicitly public health among the topics uh, to which the calls for proposals belong. This is essentially because, as you can see from the uh, footnote in here, the AUEU RNI priority of public health is very much encompassed, included in the work program 2023 of the Global Health European and Developing Countries Clinical Trials Partnership 3, EDCTP3 joint undertaking. So that will really represent a complementary way through which indeed public health will be supported and the actions foreseen for public health by the AU innovation agenda will be further supported. Let us keep in mind, however, that also within the area of green transition, you will see that some of the calls, especially those dealing with food and nutrition security, but also those in the area of food safety are, are of course, of public health importance nonetheless. Now, when you receive the PDF of this presentation, I'm also going to copy this link into the chat. Just by clicking on this hyperlink, you'll be able to be directed to the list on the funding and tenders portals of Horizon Europe to the exact list of Africa Initiative 2 calls for proposals. So you will find them already accessible here, and you can see it's 27 of them, and we we'll see the details in the next few slides. So here I find I just we organize them according to the uh, clusters. Here you find those that are pertaining to capacities for science, innovation and technology. And um, we haven't got the time to go into the details of them. I'm just gonna read through some of the titles for research and infrastructure. We have one called whose title is Strengthen the Bilateral Cooperation on Research Infrastructures with Africa with a budget of 1.5 million euro. This being a coordination and support action for uh, and another call is indeed the African Union, European Union Innovation Platform, which is indeed about coordinating the actions that will be implemented, that will aim to implement the AU innovation agenda. Please note that the deadline for application of these calls is not all the time coinciding uh, with each other, not, does not coincide for all the calls. So 
in some cases it's uh, 2024, in some of the cases 2023, and could be different times of the year. Some of them are as early as March or April this year, some of them are in fall, well, EU fall uh, they, they this year, and so on and so forth. So really, please uh, make sure you check that aspect as well. And of course, some of the calls are also in the area of digital industry and, play, and space, uh, cluster four, and you find eight titles here. I'll just comment on one earth observation platform, products and services for raw materials, which I believe could be of interest to South Africa based uh, institutions with a budget of 20 million euros and a deadline for 2023, or designing space based downstream applications with international partner, also with a deadline or in the year this year. So, we then move to the era of green transition, where we see there's really a quite a number of these uh, calls for proposals. I'm just going to read through some of them. Uh, there's a lot indeed in the area in cluster five, climate, energy and mobility, of course, of great interest to South Africa. One would be, for instance, needs based adaptation to climate change in Africa or technologies for sustainable cost efficient and low carbon footprint downstream processing and production for battery grade materials or accelerating the green transition and green and energy access in Africa, uh, frugal zero emission vehicles, concepts for the urban passage and challenge, and so on and so forth. And importantly, there's also one on marine research, which of course is of importance to South Africa too. Mission Ocean and Waters, a mission soil deal for Europe, joint demonstration and approaches and solutions to address nutrient pollution in the landscape river sea system in the Mediterranean Sea Basin, but indeed, I believe there's also expertise that could be provided from the ocean side of South Africa. We still have a, a cluster six that is about food by economy, natural resources, agriculture and environment that is part of the overall priority area of cooperation of great transition. And here you also see a wealth of calls of importance uh, indeed of this cooperation to this cooperation. I'll, I'll go through, through one of them, EU African Union cooperation, linking the activities of the food and nutrition, security and sustainable agriculture, FNSSA partnership, and those of the Pan-African Network for Economic Analysis and Policies, PANA. This is a coordination and support action uh, with deadline for this year, a budget of 4 million euros, or for example, EU African Union food safety. And of course here, this topic inevitably has implications in the area of public health, or EU African Union towards climate neutral, social just, fair trade, food systems, and so on and so forth. So really there's a lot indeed of calls that are uh, within the cluster six, within the green transition, food security and agriculture area. Now, what is important to keep in mind is that, and again, this is the same link that I showed earlier on. This will take you to the African Initiative two specific calls. In the bottom, you will see also the calls that have already passed the deadline, which were part of the African Initiative one. So overall, the total number is 66 on the page. Now, 27 of them are of the African Initiative two. What is important to keep in mind is that once you click on a specific call for proposal, like in this case, I'm taking as an example, one of cluster five, needs-based adaptation to climate change in Africa. Once you click there, you're also able to see uh, there's, a, there's a, a subsection where you can express your interest in joining a potential consortium around this project. In the event you don't, you didn't have any specific partner or you wouldn't have any specific, you didn't have any specific collaborator with whom uh, to start finding up a proposal, there's a way indeed for you to have a look, like in this case, there's 37, at least at the time when I took the, the, the snapshot, there were 37 expression of interest where uh, PIs or researchers are basically uh, expressing uh, their willingness to, to partner with other colleagues on such uh, calls for call for proposals. They express the research topics, they mention the research topics, their affiliation and so on and so forth. And through this page, they could be contacted. So if you're there and you want to contact them, you could do so, but you could also make your post and write about your research and your institution as well for others to have a look to see and potentially contacting you as well. So that's also a way for you to get started in the event you didn't have, you didn't know where to start from, but I believe that now with the NCP network being established in the country, that really represent a great starting point uh, anyway. And I'm just going to move to the conclusion just to say that, of course, the cooperation between uh, the EU and South Africa falls in the broader uh, EU-AU cooperation research innovation, where we have several partnerships according to the different priority areas. We mentioned the EDCTP in the area of public health. There's two uh, partnerships in the area of green transition, 
Food and Nutrition Security and Sustainable Agriculture, FNSSA, and Climate Change and Sustainable Energy, CCSE. South Africa participates extensively to both of them. And besides, of course, the one in public health with an EDCTP office based in Cape Town. And also there's a partnership in innovation and technology uh, built around the Horizon 2020 project in Rich in Africa that connects innovators and the networks between Africa and Europe. And of course, I'm very happy to say that Cape Town also hosts a brand new newborn, actually, um, Enriching Africa Center, indeed, uh, that, that will be uh, officially open in, 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 in the weeks to come. And of course, this falls from EU side, this falls in, in a broader dimension in which the several director uh, generals that contribute to the cooperation, not only DG Research and Innovation, where uh, I'm affiliated, but also uh, DG International Partnerships, DG INPA, you heard this before from Ambassador Kramer and the work that is done at the delegation uh, to Pretoria and uh, also to DG uh, Education and uh, Culture, DG EAC for the Maris Kloska QE Action as well. And indeed, this links me to this slide and I won't say more because indeed this will be said in, in extensively in the next presentation. Uh, please do make use of the resources that are provided also by Araxas Africa. I take this opportunity to give extra thanks to Araxas Africa represented by Ahmed and Precious uh, today with us for facilitating these events, its registration and also the advertisement. By looking at the Africa related events, you'll be able to have access to the resources of today's presentations, but also to be updated about opportunities indeed uh, for mobility, but also opportunities in general for scientists based in Africa, in South Africa, but also in Europe collaborating with Africa. That's important to, to consider. It's a two-way uh, process and a two-way dynamic cooperation indeed. And with that, you will also find extra resources and links in, in the second last slide of this presentation. Just by clicking on the hyperlinks, you'll be able to access to them. And with that, I'll leave it to, to, to Vinny. Thank you, moderator, and thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you. Um, thanks, Dr. Um, Russo. I think everyone's been quite glued to this presentation um, for the opportunities that we can work together and, of course, strategic areas uh, within the, the EU-AU agenda, but also very important uh, for South Africa. So we encourage uh, our uh, national system of innovation to engage on these oppor opportunities, and you have the NCP network as well. I now want to move very quickly on to the next segment, uh, just looking at the time. Um, we have a, a session around information tools for research mobility. You would have heard in various presentations uh, information around uh, Marie uh, Stodowska Curie actions. That's an important element. For the South African system, the internationalization of science is quite critical. So we value these opportunities and I'm gonna hand over to uh, Ms. Maria um, Mitik, who's the policy officer at DG Education and Culture to just tell us uh, a little bit about the uh, MSCA. Thank you so much. Over to you. Hello, hello everyone. Can you hear me? We can. Yes, good. So good morning, hi, uh, and uh, thank you very much for having me or having us the MSCA uh, in this event today, which is very important. I will first of all start by trying to share my screen. And you let me know if you can see it well. Um, is, it, is it okay now? Okay, good. Um, so first of all, I would like to congratulate all NCPs because I think it's a very important moment and we know how much the network is precious and invaluable when it comes to international cooperation and all the, the joint projects that we are, that we are supporting whether Horizon Europe or MSCA is uh, one of the programs under, under the framework program. For the sake of time, I will give you a very brief presentation, but I will stay here afterwards. If you have any questions, I will be very, very happy to, to answer during the event or afterwards. Um, as you already heard uh, previously from Vincenzo, so Maris Kodowska Curie Actions, or MSCA in short, are part of uh, Horizon Europe, or the framework program, so previously Horizon 2020, and we are in the in pillar one, excellent science. So it's a program supporting excellence in research and mobility and training of uh, researchers from uh, any nationality from all over the world in any scientific discipline. Um, so the main uh, we did we have in the in the current frame program we have 6.6 .6 billion euros which are allocated through different actions that we support that I will mention briefly shortly. 
uh, and our main aim is to equip researchers with new knowledge and skills through mobility and training. Um, how does that uh, really look and how do we do this? Uh, although uh, we focus a lot on uh, mobility of researchers, uh, we also place a lot of emphasis actually on the creation of partnerships. Uh, so on the one hand, we, we look at, into um, boosting researcher related, but also transversal skills of our researchers, whether early stage or experienced. Uh, at the same time, we support uh, research from any scientific discipline. So we are a bottom-up program. There are no thematic restrictions when it comes to research that, uh, that is supported, but we focus, as I said, uh, emphasis on excellence. Um, we are um, emphasizing, as we call the triple I, so international, intersectoral, interdisciplinary cooperation and mobility. Um, we also focus on the, the favorable working conditions of researchers. At, at the same time, we also place a lot of emphasis on, on partnership building. So our actions under MSCA are also really about building ecosystems and about building infrastructures through international and interdisciplinary cooperation of not only academic organizations, whether universities, research uh, institutes, but we also uh, place a lot of emphasis on intersectoral cooperation, meaning uh, cooperation between uh, academic and non-academic organizations. And I will stop here for a while because I saw that there was a question about participation of nonprofits and, uh, and NGOs. So uh, in MSCA and, and in Horizon Europe, NGOs, yes, of course, are not only uh, eligible to participate, but also very much encouraged. And this is something that they would like to see more in the future. And when it comes to the eligibility, uh, so the, the organization would need to, of course, be a legal entity and would need to be registered and recognized under law, national, international, or, or EU. So this is the, I suppose this is what you asked about whether it's formal or informal. So you would need to be to be registered. But as I say, we very much encourage participation of non-academic organizations, not only nonprofits, but we also would like to see more participation of public administrations. This is something that under MSCA, we are currently working on a lot, trying to link our researchers with uh, public administrations and provide training opportunities uh, also there, so not only in industry and business, but also going, uh, going beyond that. Um, as I said, we have several actions uh, under MSCA. You may be already familiar with them. I will mention the four that uh, South African organizations are, are eligible to participate in. So one is doctoral networks. So these are partnerships, uh, consortia of uh, organizations, so academic and non-academic that develop doctoral programs and this training for early stage researchers. So those who are going to want to obtain a PhD degree and we have several types of these doctoral networks. Uh, one of them are joint doctorates and one of them are what we call industrial doctorates, but in fact what we encourage under industrial doctorates is intersectoral cooperation. So this is the core element. Postdoctoral fellowships are fellowships for individuals who already have a PhD degree and who want to pursue their research further. Uh, so these are basically um, fellowships for individual researchers who have a host organization. Uh, and then um, within the, the fellowship, they can also have what we call placements and secondments. So meaning specific uh, periods that are not in the, the main host institution where they can get further training. Staff exchanges, which we know are quite, quite popular, um, uh, are basically partnerships of different organizations, so international partnerships of different organizations where they work together um, on, on the joint research project and we enable staff mobility to, to, through this kind of action. And what is very uh, important to note about staff exchanges is that they don't target only research staff but also through staff exchanges, managerial and technical staff can also be involved and have mobility periods as long as they are involved in this specific research project that is being uh, funded. CoFund, as the name itself says, uh, is basically co-funding or top up for existing uh, regional, national, international programs, doctoral and postdoctoral, um, to which basically under, under MSCA, we just provide additional funding to support their, um, their implementation. Um, when it comes to uh, participation of organizations and individuals, more specifically, if we talk about South African organizations and individuals, so for organizations that I already mentioned, 
uh, in the context of, of nonprofits, it is the same for any organization. So it has to be a legal entity, as it from an academic and academic sector. And in terms of specific MSA action in doctoral networks, uh, South African organizations can be a beneficiary, meaning signing the grant agreement and getting the funding, which we know uh, is the case for, for some uh, South African organizations. They're already participating in doctoral networks. But they can also be an associated partner in the rest of the actions, meaning they can host researchers to be part uh, of the partnership, uh, but uh, not get direct funding and you know, not sign a uh, grant agreement. For individual researchers, as I said, MSCA support uh, researchers of any nationality. So this, of course, includes also South African um, researchers uh, in any discipline. So really, we have no thematic uh, priorities. And then we support those who also a PhD or who already have and want to pursue their research further. Very, very briefly, because you already heard from Vincenzo some stats, uh, I just want to give kind of brief overview of participation of African um, organizations and researchers on the horizon 2020. And also below, you can see the, the participation of South Africa. South Africa is a top performer when it comes to number of researchers, organizations, and projects in MSCA. So this is nothing uh, new for you when it comes to Horizon Europe, very sensitively. Uh, I am providing these, these figures in terms of researchers, organizations, and projects. You can see here also the number of projects uh, by action. These are tentative numbers because researchers, even in the calls that, you know, and projects that have been accepted, researchers are still being recruited. So this is really something that's now, as uh, Vincenzo already mentioned, you know, these are live, up, live updates and the numbers will change and keep changing. Uh, but as you can already see, at least in numbers of projects, this is already very good for the first uh, comment. Here you will have the presentation, so you will be able to, to look into more detail. This is just a table uh, providing dates of upcoming calls for MSCA actions and the budget that is available. So uh, you will have time afterwards to go into more detail. Um, and finally, uh, this slide and the next one just provides you with additional useful links and resources that you can use in, in preparing the proposals uh, and looking for, for partners. And as I said already at the beginning, I would like to conclude with this. I think that one of the most valuable resources and networks that, that any applicant can rely on are really the national contact points. So in this regard, I stop and congratulate the entities uh, again. Thank you. Thank you so much for that uh, presentation. I think it's a very important element uh, for our cooperation, uh, uh, Mythic um, Science, uh, internationalization of science in terms of mobility, exchanges. Uh, the human capital development is an important element for um, South African decadal plan. And I think we, um, we appreciate and we encourage our researchers um, to engage in the mobility actions that you have, have presented. Um, we now also have an, another important platform, uh, and we um, have um, Mr. Dr. Ahmed uh, Malel uh, from um, Euraxis, and that's the regional representative for Africa, um, to come in to give us a presentation regarding this. Of course, these are all tools available for um, the research community to access. So please, again, I want to make the point that uh, you should go to the links once the presentations are available, um, contact uh, ISASTAP, et cetera, contact your access. Uh, everyone's here to, uh, to support the cooperation. Um, so Dr. Ahmed, it's over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, you heard me, yeah? it's okay. So, yes. um, uh, it is a pleasure to me to, to present uh, your Access Africa Hub, but first of all, I will present your Access Worldwide. And after that, I will present <coughs> all services uh, given by your Access Africa. So um, for your Access Worldwide, first of all, uh, your Access is an initiative of the European Commission established with the aim to provide free access to information about research in Europe, opportunities for research funding and international collaboration and transnational mobility. It links researchers in worldwide to Europe. Furthermore, the network is uh, open to all nationalities and research fields. For uh, your access worldwide, you are in North America, Latin America and Caribbean, India, China, Asia, Korea, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and finally we are in Africa. 
for uh, main tasks for the Access Africa. First of all, management and development of the Access Africa network. Um, uh, first point, uh, building partnerships with African research institutions and organizations, promoting research mobility between Africa and Europe, and support for African researchers uh, by providing information, advice, and assistance to African researchers, supporting the career development of African researchers who are already working in Europe. Third, promoting European research opportunities in Africa, so uh, raising awards to, of European research opportunities among African research and research institutions, uh, uh, supporting the participation of African research in European research projects, uh, such Pillar 1 and Pillar 2 in Horizon Europe and Africa Initiative 2. And finally, reinforce the networking with all RNI African actors. Uh, so uh, through organi organizing events and activities that promote networking and collaboration, facilitating the exchange of information and expertise between the two regions. For your access uh, platform, so if you if you put in Google your access, and after that you will see this uh, uh, screen, and in this screen there is a tab for worldwide, and you can see here there is nine hubs, and you can see in the Africa in the top. After that there is. Uh, here in uh, yellow button, sign up for free membership to Your Access Africa to uh, be uh, involved in in, in uh, Your Access Africa Hub and uh, to receive all information about all opportunities given by European Commission to Africa. There is uh, an overview of uh, 2020 for uh, there is uh, uh, the launch uh, uh, year launch of uh, Access Africa, and there is a lot of uh, of events, a lot of uh, of uh, meetings, a lot of uh, face to face uh, uh, events uh, in South Africa, also in Kenya, Ethiopia, Egypt, Tunisia, Morocco. And uh, we have uh, uh, already uh, uh, have good database from all uh, African researchers and in, uh, in, in, uh, from uh, all uh, uh, LNI institutions. Here are some uh, photos about our activities in um, in Africa in uh, last year here in Morocco, uh, here in uh, Kenya, uh, also in uh, Kenya, here in uh, Egypt, and. Uh, with uh, our colleagues from uh, ESA staffs from South Africa. It is the Search Mobility Day in December 2022. Uh, 20, 20, uh, uh, there is a photo from a launch of Mediterranean Initiative in Cairo in uh, 13 January, uh, and there is uh, uh, another uh, event with uh, stakeholders, a uh, big networking day with all stakeholders from many countries, also uh, many countries from Africa. Well, what can we do for you? First of all, promote EU national research landscape, promote EU funding opportunities, promote your access network, invite speakers from the network and connect researchers with research labs. And how can we work together? First of all, invite us to present in your bilateral events. If you have events, scientific events in your universities or in your laboratories, don't hesitate to invite us. We can present all opportunities given to uh, PhD students, given to uh, researchers, and we can also uh, uh, organize uh, some practical workshops related to how to draft proposal in Pillar 1 and also how to be partner in Horizon Europe project in, in Pillar 2. Forward us requests about EU funding to go to your countries. Tell us how can we support you further. So our tools are, uh, first of all, the website and social media, flash notes, newsletter, information sessions, and practical workshops. And if you can see here in the website of your access Africa, there's a lot and lot of opportunities given to PhD students and given to uh, researchers uh, through postdoctoral fellowships. And uh, also you can uh, uh, subscribe to all events uh, the, uh, for free, and you can download all uh, the documents and all uh, resources related to slides and mini more. For your access portal in, in general, there is uh, 
uh, less than two million visitors per year and less than 1.2 uh, uh, million page views per month. And there is free for use. For your access jobs, uh, for example, in 2021, there is uh, more than uh, 93,000 research positions already published in the website of your access. Join us, be informed, be proactive. Uh, click in this button to join our community of researchers. We are in LinkedIn, we are in Facebook, and we are in Twitter, and we have, we have already our uh, YouTube channel, and our email is africa at youraccess.net. Free, easy, and valuable. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, me, I am Dr. Ahmed Malal, the regional representative for Reaccess Africa, and uh, 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 we have with us uh, Dr. Precious Equer, the local assistant for Africa. Thank you for your attention, and I give you the floor. Uh, thank you for that very informative presentation, Dr. Uh, Malal, and I think it also gives um, everyone the idea of the, the type of resources that are available, the information. I mean, you. You showed us some of the, the screenshots of the, the type of information you post, and it's quite detailed. So I think we can only just encourage everyone on this uh, on this session to actually access it, to look at it, um, to look at the upcoming opportunities, to look at detailed information around the call. And I think that's quite important. Um, so just speaking on that, the next uh, segment, we have two speakers. So this is around sharing some of the, the experiences, taking it a little bit practical. Um, and our first speaker is Dr. Byron Taut, who's the former um, NCP for security, and he will um, speak around some of his experiences on, on being an NCP within the South African um, system. Over to you, uh, Byron. Thank you. Thank you, Vinnie. Ambassador Kramer, uh, Director Russo, Vini, DSI, and European Commission colleagues and fellow researchers. So when I got involved as an NCP for security in 2007, it was, uh, I think, in December. I had no idea what I let myself in for. But uh, 10 years later, I think I can, when, when my uh, term as NCP ended in 2018, I was able to talk of a really positive experience and I'll share some of that with you. Firstly, it was actually fascinating to be uh, part of the European community uh, and to understand the uniqueness of this European research and innovation program and to understand the fact that the European Commission and Europe as such actually appreciate the value of global research collaboration because there's mutual benefit and they actually invited us in to, to become active participants. I found that um, an amazing experience and also what's amazing is a support ecosystem like Euro, Euro access that uh, we just heard about, uh, the websites, access to papers, uh, NCP networks. It was, there's so much in place and I think it only gets better over time. So thank you to the European Commission and uh, to the Department of Science and Innovation for giving us this opportunity to participate as national contact points. The second thing that I found really positive was that although there's, uh, there's a focus on research and innovation, so it's not merely about uh, here's funds, what research do you want to do? It was very, it's very needs driven and challenge, challenge based and the, res, uh, the research and innovation topics expect clear tangible outcomes. And that puts it, I think, at a unique level globally in terms of understanding what the needs are and where research and innovation needs to take us. The second very or third very positive uh, experience for me was the national contact point networks. A security research uh, net, a national contact point, I was part of the CERN project. And through that, I, I learned to uh, know the NCPs, uh, security NCPs in Africa also participated in ICT projects and that uh, afforded me another group of NCPs to relate to. And they have become not just colleagues in this joint initiative, but also friends and really helpful resources in making connections, understanding the 
European ecosystem, um, getting quick reaction if you're trying to get hold of a company or a researcher somewhere in Europe or even in South Africa. Uh, it was really valuable to be part of that research network. And with some of them, I built long-term relationships and I still regard them as friends. The fourth very positive thing is the support from DSI in South Africa, both in Brussels, where Don in the beginning and later Vinnie was the key people to know. Uh, they opened many doors, created opportunities. Uh, there's so much support from DSI and I would like to thank and congratulate them with that and um, tell to the NCPs use the support network because that's what helps you gain success. And then finally, what was really nice was to be part of some uh, framework program seven and horizon 2020 projects. Uh, and through the projects, I firstly learned how the system works, which is a valuable thing to know in terms of being able to give advice to researchers who want to become part of uh, one of these projects. The process of, of quoting, getting approval, etc. All those things are necessary in the role of an NCP. So the NCP in the end, I found can add a lot of value. Uh, firstly, just the general awareness raising of what it's about, what the opportunities are and how to get access to them. But I found that 10 times more important for the NCP is to be able to spot specific opportunities and activate them, <laughs> to look at a specific call and um, go to a specific researcher or a research organization and say, I think this is the opportunity that you should focus on. That helps a, a great deal in, in focusing the researchers' efforts uh, and knowing what to do, and especially if you can link them up with somebody in Europe, either directly or through the NCP network. That's a really important role that the NCP can play. And in order to play that role, the NCP needs to understand the European ecosystem, but also understand the, the South African ecosystem. Um, and typically, to, in order to participate, you know, it's a little bit more than just being a researcher and being linked to a university. There must be something you can offer. And that, that needs to be clearly understood. And I think the three main things that uh, a South African researcher can offer is either excellent expertise in a domain or excellent research facilities that uh, they have access to or a unique use case. I think the environmental aspects, uh, for example, would uh, South Africa would offer really unique use cases for joint South Africa EU or Africa EU projects that would be valuable opportunities to do joint collaborative research. And this is what um, NCPs need to cultivate that understanding and that ability to spot the opportunities and spot the key people that can respond and then to guide them in terms of uh, the, the calls that would be relevant. And this needs to happen even before the calls go out because a lot of groundwork is needed to reach that level of understanding and trust so you can make the connections. So there's two challenges, I think, in this role. The one is to get researchers to respond. Um, sometimes there were really good opportunities, but the researchers were either busy or they thought it was too hard work or they were not um, happy with the potential success rate. Uh, but the, the NCP can play a unique role in, in highlighting what's really unique and special so that the researchers can go that extra mile. It's, it remains hard work. It requires excellence. But still, uh, if you go the extra mile, um, you see the mutual benefit. Then writing a proposal is really a special event in your life. Even if the project's ultimately not funded, you've built new relationships. And maybe next time, you have a better chance at success. 
The second is getting the project approved. And I'm also happy to see the increase in success rate. 28.1%, uh, I think, is, is really good for South Africa and European projects. And uh, this Africa EU, Africa Initiative 2, I think, is also a very positive development because it brings it closer to home. And it's something that we should be able to respond. So finally, if you put in a proposal, uh, you've ticked all the boxes and you get this joy of having a project approved. I think that's really special. And as NCP, I had, was able to experience that a few times and that kicks in a really wonderful new experience of joint global research and joint outcomes for the common good. And I would encourage the NCPs to embrace their roles and take on the challenge and build the networks to make this happen. And I wish you best of luck in all your endeavors. And thanks again to DSI and European Commission for this fascinating program and the opportunity to share some of my experiences. Thank you, uh, Dr. Todd. Uh, it's an exciting role, I think. Um, as you've indicated, there were lots of positives. It's about the networks, but I think also in science and innovation or technology, it's about the, the people contacts. So it's about creating those, those networks, facilitating um, South African researchers to projects, partners in Africa, partners in Europe. And I think um, that's, uh, that's an exciting road ahead for our newly appointed NCPs. And thank you for all your support as a, as a previous or a former NCP uh, and taking the time today to, to come here and speak to us uh, Again, thank you so much. Um, so on the one hand, we have the NCPs, but on the other hand, we also have the researcher element. So we are now um, going to be um, hearing from one of our emerging researchers, Ms. Um, Samira Gopal, and she's a PhD candidate uh, from the University of, of Western Cape. Over to you, thank you. Greetings everyone, and I'm so thankful for this opportunity. I'm from the University of the Western Cape, a first year PhD student in nuclear physics. I'm also a teaching assistant in one of the first year courses for physics. I am also involved in volunteer work with the high school scholars involved in mostly STEM related fields. Uh, last year, I had the wonderful opportunity of attending the Euro Science Open Forum. Um, whereby it was hosted by the University of Leiden, where we were introduced to a lot of um, new developments in science, new uh, scientists and professionals in different uh, fields as well. One of the outcomes of this development, um, uh, of the, attending the conference, I presented to the, depart the physics department of UWC to all my colleagues, and um, um, students whereby we uh, laid out all the opportunities that are available to them. As well, I uh, was collaborating with the, you know, uh, with the Euro Planet, which they assisted us in obtaining one of their professors from the University of Italy to talk more about her research in um, astrophysics and her current project that she was working on Mars. Uh, about finding life on Mars. A lot of the students really enjoyed the talk and they were much aware of the fields and careers that are available outside um, of South Africa, as well as the opportunities they are of. Um, coming from a disadvantage, uh, historical disadvantage institution, most of the students um, are restricted in terms of the research topics of which they can choose due to the lack or um, not good in not good research infrastructures. As uh, as these uh, fundings were made um, available to us and introduced to us on this um, event, we can uh, allow these students to be mobilized in order to interact with other institutions in order to know about the different projects that are available and also to 
um, allow them to perform on an international level on research, groundbreaking research as well. I would also like to um, suggest, make a suggestion to the Department of Science and Innovation of South Africa to hold these practical workshops at different uh, historical disadvantaged institutions, whereby they will present these funding opportunities that are available to the postgraduate sector. So students are made aware of this, um, these wonderful opportunities that are available and knowing that they stand a chance of performing groundbreaking research as well. I would also look, um, I would also like to collaborate with the MSCA and to know about the opportunities that they offer for us as an institution as well. So thank you. Uh, thank you, um, Ms. Uh, Gopal. I think that was uh, interesting as well for us um, to take on board some of your, your suggestions. Um, from the Department of Science and Innovation perspective, uh, the colleagues will continue to have information sessions. Um, the team will continue to work with uh, the national contact points. And I think that's an important element in uh, widening the reach um, of the information to all our institutions uh, in the South African uh, National System of Innovation. I am looking briefly at the clock and we possibly could have, I know there's been a series of, um, of questions that have been posted online um, and the team has been answering uh, those questions. But uh, if there are any other pressing questions, we have a few minutes. Um, maybe uh, about five or, or so um, that we, if, if the participants of the session uh, want to post online, um, I'm going to hand over to Ms. Um, uh, Chigela Matuba Tuba. Perhaps there were some common questions uh, that may be of interest that you've already answered on the chat that you can just alert the rest of the audience to. Uh, it might be of common interest. And if there's one or two new ones that are coming on, on stream, we can address them. And um, just to know that all the contact details that have been provided on the ESASTEP website, on the UAXIS, et cetera, those are contacts you, you can use in future. But I think for, for the South African researchers, the, the ESASTEP um, contact point is quite critical. But I'm just gonna hand over to uh, Ms. Uh, Tugela Matuba Tuba, who can perhaps just highlight some of the, the common um, questions um, that have come up and some of the, the responses that may be of interest to everyone. Thanks uh, together. Um, thank you, Ms. Pile. Um, thank you also to the colleagues, uh, Ms. Ndombin Puba and Karabon Poho for responding to the questions that have been posted online. Perhaps um, I'll just hand over to the Dr. Loruso just to touch on the question that I think is important on whether um, the coordination part of the project, is it European participants or is also open to um, other participants to co coordinate the projects? Um, as well as um, Dr. Loruso, if you can uh, address the question regarding social sciences, uh, percentage of um, success for um, social science uh, projects within the, the, the framework program as well. Thanks. And thank you very much together and, and thank you the, thank, many thanks to all participants for for their questions and active participation indeed uh, so when it comes to the uh, possibilities in need to coordinate projects uh, indeed coordination is open also to african and south african uh, research entities so absolutely uh, i also take this opportunity to clarify that coordination does not necessarily mean leadership in the project in the sense that, uh, as you can imagine, the coordination role entails quite a substantial uh, administrative uh, number of administrative tasks, uh, because indeed, of course, there's quite some, some paperwork, so to say, to, to, to be done starting already from the proposal. But yes, that will be possible also uh, from, a, uh, from, from, at, from the end of a, of a South African-based research entities. And when it comes to the space, the so second question, the space to humanities within the uh, first, uh, for South Africa specifically, within the first work program, 2021-2022 uh, of Horizon Europe, 
I'm looking at the uh, performance of South Africa uh, specifically to try and see uh, uh, what, what has been done. And perhaps I take this opportunity to reshare my screen for a very short uh, moment. And there we can see, uh, I would like to, to really focus everyone's attention on uh, the cluster on, 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 on culture, creativity, and inclusive society. So in this case, there's four projects that have been uh, granted, that have been retained and awarded for South Africa. And um, um, I, yes, I think I think this is, and also civil security for society. Unfortunately, one proposal only, and uh, it was unsuccessful, uh, regrettably. So uh, I would say that would answer the question for four projects for the time being. That being said, we should also take into account there's some projects in other areas, including food security, agriculture, and so on and so forth, may also have a social sciences component in them. So uh, uh, let's not forget that depending on you know what expertise is provided by what research entity in them. But within the uh, thematic areas, yes, four projects uh, so far. And uh, in total, uh, as you can see, quite a number of proposals, uh, 30, 31 proposals for cultural creativity and inclusive society. So the success rate is of 13% and only one proposal so far, unfortunately, are successful for civil security for society. Thank you. Over to you again together. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. LaRusso. I think also going forward, um, Dr. C. Khajani from the HSRC, as well as the two officials from the DSI, Mr. Palafala and Mr. Ngoveni would be very instrumental in assisting um, researchers in, in, in the inclusive uh, culture, creativity, thematic area. It's quite an important um, area also, I think, for the DSI. Um, I think we can take one more question, which I would like you to also touch on um, regarding if you're a new institution and you've never participated in the framework program, what are the first steps that you should do? If you can just um, assist us there. Dr. Luruso? Um, yeah, sorry, to I wanted to confirm that you want me to still continue. Well, I, uh, thank, I, I thank, thank you very much for, the, for this question. Uh, it's indeed an important one. Uh, thank you, uh, Kerry, uh, Ms. Wilson, uh, Dr. Wilson. Uh, there's a, several steps. So I would say that now, uh, I'm very happy to say that in the case of South Africa, I would say do approach, and please, to Gail and colleagues, do correct me if you wouldn't agree, do approach your respective national contact point. I think that will be engage with the network and make the most of them, uh, of their presence. That will be my number one suggestion. Next to that, I think also have a look, as I said, at the, in my, during my presentation, at the call that is specific, that is the dearest to your, uh, to your research area. Uh, and have, once you click on the call in the funding and tender portals, and I shared the link in the chat, but I'm happy to reshare it, and it will also be in the PDF for my presentation, that you will find a, an expression of interest uh, subsection where other scientists or the research institutions or research groups have already posted their interest, especially in the case that they haven't got a network established or a potential consortium created. And then you can find some potential collaborators that you may want to approach. You can contact them. You can find by clicking on the contact part, you will find a contact detail and you can express your interest in, in creating a consortium with them. So I, I think the least you could do will be walking these two ways, NCP, and of course, I believe the NCO, respective NCP will be extremely resourceful in that space and having a look at the funny and tender ports and the tenders portals and see what it's in there. But perhaps uh, together and the colleagues from DSI and the DSI and, and NCPs may have additional suggestions as well as Iraxis Africa Ahmed, who's also been himself an NCP for Tunisia in the past. Over to you colleagues, thank you. Thank you very much. That's correct. And we also remain um, available from the Department uh, of Science and Innovation to assist any new institutions um, who would be interested to respond to uh, any of the calls for proposals. And then also just in addition, um, if you're a new institution, you would need to register to get a PIC number, correct? Um, so that you can be able to then respond to the calls. If you are a participant already from a university, it's better to um, find out from the research office regarding the PIC number, which will then use when you um, submit the call for proposals. Thank you. Um, I don't see any other questions. Um, Excuse me, together. On, there is one. Mm -hmm. There's a comment, yeah, there's a comment, perhaps we want to. Okay. Uh, 
Um, do you want to take that one, Dr. Laruso? Yes, the I mean, I the exclusion, that. yeah, okay. I could try and, and thank you very much, Mor Mora Ken, for, 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 uh, for following up on, on the points of inclusion and the importance of inclusion and, of course, to, 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 uh, to counteract exclusion. Um, I think we, we just, uh, I think the program is, is open to all uh, established legal entities. So as, as the eligibility criteria are uh, providing the guidelines for that, I think that despite, regardless of the size of the entity, the number of staff, the a geographical background and so on and so forth, all entities are uh, eligible to uh, uh, arise in Europe uh, calls for proposals. And I uh, totally appreciate and acknowledge the difficulty for an emerging uh, actor in the field to also be successful in a very competitive framework program. Uh, but I think that there's a, a possible solution, if I could be hopeful and optimistic on this, is the fact that the most successful actors, and we've seen a few, I mean, I, I, I could mention a few of the universities that have been quite successful so far, they were in the first block that I was showing on, you know, maybe those can also try and engage in, the, if I may dare say that, they can engage in their consortium, some emerging actors, and through that, uh, provide for capacity in that space. That's also what I suggest to other uh, colleagues, some of other African countries, I think smaller players can be helped by being included in consortia by already established players, and through that, then create a positive legacy around that. But please be assured that there's openness towards all legal entities, despite their size, despite their history, and of course, they may be just brand new uh, in that space. So hopefully, that addresses your point. Otherwise, happy to follow up also by email. And thank you, together, please expand on this if you if you like. Um, thank you very much for that. Um, I think it was already touched on by in the opening remarks by our DDG, um, the issue of uh, the inclusion of a historically disadvantaged institution, especially for um, EU programs such as the framework program. And the department is active, actively um, looking for uh, a ways to assist um, historically disadvantaged and other institutions who who are not able to participate in such programs. So thank you very much for that comment, Mr. Madiba. It's it's a comment that we note at the department. And um, I think as Sumira um, also touched on being from a historically disadvantaged institution, how challenging it was for her um, to access such opportunities. But at the department, we have noted that and we are putting together plans in order for us to reach out to those organizations and try and, and assist them in gaining these opportunities. Um, I think that's all we have. I will hand over then to Ms. Pillay um, to continue with the program. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, uh, Ms. Matiba Tiba and, and uh, Dr. LaRusso for, for taking those questions. And perhaps just to also come in there from the South African um, system, um, I think the hosting of various information sessions to be as widespread as possible. Uh, we are also engaging, as Ms. Matubatuba has said, we are working with established institutions to possibly look at how they can partner uh, with our historically disadvantaged institution researchers and especially where we are providing co-funding. Uh, because of course, Horizon um, Europe is a con competitive program, but under Horizon Europe, we also partner uh, with the EU in terms of co-funding. Um, and there are opportunities there where we work closely um, with our researchers from our historically disadvantaged institutions. Uh, but of course, this is an ongoing conversation and we will, will engage um, with our various uh, institutions and partners to move forward. Um, looking at the time, I think we have now come to um, the concluding remarks of this um, very informative um, session that has been hosted with our partners. Um, I know that Ms. Linka Beersman has uh, sent an apology. She won't be able to join us for concluding remarks, but uh, in... Uh, her place is uh, Dr. Vincenzo Russo, uh, who works very closely with her. And uh, of course, I'm gonna hand over to you to uh, from the European Commission side, Dr. Russo, um, to just uh, give a, a few concluding remarks. Thanks. Thank you very much, Vinny. And uh, on behalf of my head of unit, Ninka Bosman, uh, she conveys her excuses for not being able to 
uh, eventually join us uh, due to unforeseen circumstances. And of course, on behalf of our Director General uh, Research and Innovation, uh, I, I like to convey a lot of uh, gratitude and appreciation for this uh, very productive, I believe, and dynamic uh, session, uh, including more than 200 participants online. Thank you all very much indeed for engaging with us. We had more than 400 registrants up to this morning. I also take this opportunity to express my gratitude to all colleagues that made this possible today, uh, starting from the colleagues from the DSI, as a staff network, the delegation to South Africa, and of course, last but not least, by any means, Iraq, South Africa, for the great work in facilitating this webinar, its registration process, and uh, Iraq, South Africa has been a great partner to us over the past few weeks while we rolled out this series of webinars across uh, strategic partners uh, within the African continent and beyond. I think we, hopefully we've been uh, clear enough in saying that there's a, a lot of good results that have been uh, showing by the cooperation between the EU and South Africa as part of the first work program of Horizon Europe uh, for the years 2021-2022. Uh, we're really uh, far better results already if compared to South Africa's already good performance in Horizon 2020, uh, the success rate uh, being very impressive indeed of 28%. Uh, 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 that being said, that being said, of course, we believe that more can be done uh, in ensuring a, a widespread participation of South Africa uh, based higher education institutions and research entities. And uh, we we heard this a lot in today's conversation. And also, if I could say, ensuring several sectors are coming on board, including also civil society organizations and NGOs, but at the same time, also the private sector, whose role is indeed pivotal in ensuring uh, tangible outcomes reach the societal, uh, rich society and indeed the end users and citizens after all. And South Africa is also doing uh, quite well in that space with 11 SMEs uh, that have been granted so far in Horizon Europe project. So really that provides a foundation for us to, to on which we can build and do better than what we, we are doing. I also take this opportunity to personally thank the DSI for the great uh, interaction that we have on a daily basis on Horizon uh, Europe, but also I've got to say on other uh, uh, initiatives that are built around the RNI Research and Innovation Corporation. Uh, perhaps uh, I, I'd just like to, to conclude by saying that indeed uh, we need to make sure that this uh, interaction with the scientists on the ground is done indeed as interactively as possible. So while commending the work of the DSI that was done in appointing the network of NCPs and uh, while greeting all the NCPs, whose uh, profiles we, and, and backgrounds we, we learned on today during Tugela's presentation. I also take this opportunity to invite the scientists to reach out to them and to the DSI, really making the most of this resourceful opportunity and platform within the, uh, within the, within, within the country. And of course, uh, through that, also of our extensive dialogue and ongoing uh, dialogue. Finally, last but not least, I also take this opportunity to say that this falls within a broader uh, cooperation scheme and within a broader uh, policy uh, initiative that is indeed the AU, the African Union, European Union Innovation Agenda that aims to govern our next decade of cooperation, research and innovation uh, with an upcoming adoption expected during the second RNI ministerial meeting to take place on June 13th in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. And of course, we count, very much count on South Africa's continued uh, support and commitment in endorsing the agenda in Addis, and then of course, further along in providing a substantial contribution to its implementation. And with that, I'll stop here and pass happily the floor to Vini, who I thank very much for the excellent moderation. Thank you all very much indeed. Over. Uh, thank you, Adam. So I, I want to, I was concluding the month, I want to take us back to the beginning when we started the session. Um, and we said the objective was to launch our NCP network, but also to share information. And I think those two very important objectives were met. Uh, there's been a lot of information, and perhaps too much. So I think our, our participants have access to the resources to facilitate further engagement. As the as a South African government, as the, as the Department of Science and Innovation, uh, you would have heard in the opening remarks uh, from our DBG that our decadal plan sees science and innovation as a cross cutter uh, for government to achieve the objectives to grow our economic development in the country. 
And I think that's a very important point, the role that science and innovation plays in that. And it's through the community, it's through the innovators, it's through the researchers um, that you make a positive contribution to some of the broad objectives that governments put in place, and especially the Department of Science and Innovation. And to also say that we value international collaboration. So as a government, um, as a department, we work closely with the European Commission in putting together um, the platform, the enabling environment, um, but ultimately, we want that in the environment to be used by our research community to collaborate and work together, because that's where the real impact in growing our knowledge, in addressing our um, challenges globally that we face will be addressed. So again, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I just want to say to please, please continue to engage with us, engage with the team, uh, the resources are available, the seed funding is available, um, the elements are there. Um, and we want to be able to grow our participation in Horizon Europe, but also to make an impact because that addresses some of our critical challenges that we do face going forward. Um, I also want to take the opportunity to like Dr. Lorenzo to thank uh, our partners, of course, to thank, thank uh, DG. Uh, Research and innovation in the European Commission to thank uh, the Axis um, and, of course, the, the EU delegation in South Africa. And, of course, finally, uh, the DSI team. Uh, thank you um, for, for putting this together with our partners. And we hope to continue the conversation. This, this is really the start of a process. And we will hope to have more information sessions, work closely with our NCP network and colleagues and partners. So again, thank you all for making time to attend. Um, and we hope to see you soon. Um, and take care. We might see you in person, not virtually next time. Bye-bye.